Here we are again, folks. We're in Philippians this morning, and this is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. And we're talking about divine purpose this, this morning. Divine purpose. Do you do anything on purpose? Do you have a purpose in your life? Do you get up every morning on purpose? Do you pour yourself a cup of coffee on purpose? Do you uh, mull around the house and do the things that you do on purpose? Do you go out and put the keys in the car on purpose and turn it over and crank up your car or your truck on purpose? Do you pull it in gear and either turn it around or drive out of the driveway and purpose to go down the driveway and get on the road? And then you purpose to go to work. You get down there and there's this little sign. It's octagon. It's red. And it says S-T-O-P. That doesn't mean to spin tires on the pavement. That means to stop. So you stop on purpose. You stop. Why do you stop there on purpose? Because the sign says to stop. And if you do not stop, that little town policeman, he's hiding somewhere around there. I live in a town where they hide everywhere. They back off the road and they turn their lights off and they hide everywhere to see who they can catch doing what. And you're going to, if you live in this little town and you do not obey the law to the letter of the law, you are going to pay a fine on a monthly basis and they're going to make sure of it. So uh, that's what we're going to do if we do not pay attention to God's word. The word is going to make sure we pay a fine if we do not pay attention to it. Now, divine purpose comes by purpose. It doesn't come by accident. God, on purpose, had this Bible written. It is a love letter to the man who has said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come in to my heart. It has your name on it. By the way, is your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? That is the life of the permanent book, the book that has permanent, everlasting life in heaven written down in it. Now, when you were born, your book was your name was written down in a book. My name was written down, Brother Peter, uh, born nineteen forty one, and. Uh, my name was written down. I was born by blood and water. In 1972, my name was uh, unblotted. It was not blotted out, but unblotted and written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. When I said at 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. Nobody there but me and the Lord. You say, Brother Peter, was it that simple? Well, I'm going to tell you what. My friend said the next day, who are you? I said, I'm, I'm Peter. And they said, no, you're not. <laughs> Peter's a drunk, swears and cusses and drinks and ravels and everything else. And I said, that was the old Peter. I am now been renewed and restored. I am a new Peter. I'm in the same body. I look the same. But I don't have the same heart. And God gave me a new heart. He gave me a, a, a new tongue that never swore again from that day to this. And he gave me a new life that didn't drink again from that day to this. And God came and restored me at 3 o'clock in the morning, nobody but me and the Lord. That's how simple it is. My friend, that's how simple it is. No matter where you live, what country you're in, no matter who you are, no matter what religion you are. You can be any religion you, you care to be. But if you are in another religion, my advice to you is to ask Jesus Christ to save you. And he will deliver you from a religiosity. I am not saying that you might not be. You may be one of the best followers in the religion that you're in. But get Jesus Christ and he will help you and show you the way. Now Paul's talking about abiding in 
Jesus Christ. And the resource of Christ will come to you through the book. The book, the Bible, the Holy Bible. My suggestion to you is get a King James Version study Bible. This happens to be a uh, concordant survey of the Bible, and it's in the King James Version. And Paul was writing to a letter to the Philippians, and this letter is just it's brimming over with love. It's just brimming over with love. It's running over. It's like, have you ever seen one of these little fountains uh, that the water is just continually just bubbles over the top and runs down the vase? Bubbles over the top and runs down the vase. Oh, man. It, what a picture of a real, live, born-again believer. This word, if you hide it in your heart, will bubble over the top of that pitcher and just run down that vase. And when you meet people, you're out there working on the street. I'm a paint contractor. I'm out there painting. And, and some little fellow on a bicycle will come by. And you can go over there and, and talk to him about the Lord. And, and uh, give him a dollar bill out of your pocket and Give him a track and uh, say, hey, by the way, I got a bottle of water here in the truck. Would you like a bottle of water? And I got a pack of gum. Would you like a stick of gum? Or even a pack. Say, here, just take the whole pack. And uh, Listen, does your water run over? Does your spiritual water run over your vase? Are you born again? For me to live is Christ. And for me to die is gain. Die. What do you mean die? Die to myself. Die to myself. Can you be like Christ and not be like some ugly old man? Uh, a guy comes up on a bicycle. He doesn't smell too good. He doesn't look too good. He doesn't act too good. He is uh, not. He is a, you say, uh, and boy, if I, I wasn't here, he'd have that skill saw on that bicycle. And you know he might do that. But you can change his mind from doing that. If you'll do what I just said and talk to that guy like Jesus would talk to him, when he comes by your place on the bicycle, he's not going to steal your skill saw. He's not going to steal anything that belongs to you. He's going to come by there and see Jesus in you. And he's going to come by again. And I pray, Lord, send him by again and so that I can be the spiritual leader that I need to be and do the same for him that I did before. Prove myself twice over. Can you prove yourself twice over? Can you even prove to yourself that you believed what you said when you asked Jesus to save your soul. Paul's talking to the uh, Philippian people here. And he's asking them some questions in love. And he's telling them some things. He's saying having victory over your circumstances. If you have to work for a living, that's a circumstance. There are people who do not have to work for a living. But I'm going to tell you this right now. This circumstance and the truth, in, in a way, is much harder than yours who have to go out there and work. Because they can lose the understanding of a working man if they're not careful. And life becomes a system of hunting pleasure. Hunting something to do. Getting up early in the morning, going to the golf course to play. Doing things that just entertain the body for the period of time they're on this earth. If you want to entertain your soul while you're on this earth, get in the Word of God. Now go to the book of Philippians. Start reading it. I haven't said anything about what it says this morning. I've just talked about it. Go to it. Read it for yourself. Get in it. It is a love letter.
to